One of the things people think of first when they think I'm going to start an online business is stickers. It sounds like so much fun. I'm going to create pretty stickers. I'm going to set them up to sell on Etsy or Redbubble or wherever. And it's not a bad idea, but I want you to think bigger than that. And so today we are going to make some digital stickers. We're going to use some really fun AI to create them. But I want you to think about them not just as stickers that you can set up to sell. These are going to be digital. You could print them too, but they're going to be digital. So think about what's the planner these could go with. What are these scrapbook pages these could go with? What's the bigger digital product that these stickers could go along with that you could create? So let's go create some stickers and you keep that in your mind while we're doing that, okay? All right, we are starting this digital sticker creating journey here in mid-journey which is my favorite AI image generator. If you don't like AI image generators, I'm gonna tell you right now, this isn't the video for you because we're going to be making these stickers in mid journey and we're gonna use Canva to edit them. So here we go. You can see I've already been playing around with a couple of stickers this morning and I'm gonna show you exactly the prompt that I got to create these stickers but also a whole bunch more. So you can see here at the bottom, I've used brackets so that I'm gonna get multiple outputs with just this one prompt. Within these brackets, I've got fauvism, watercolor, naturalistic, gauche, pop art, paper quilling, line drawing, minimalist, pastel drawing, and folk art. So I'm gonna get a set of stickers for each of those styles. It's 10 different styles. We get four different sets of stickers with Mid Journey or sets of images with Mid Journey every time we create, every time we run a prompt. So we're gonna have 40 different types of stickers. So I'm gonna hit enter and Mid Journey's gonna ask me, do we really wanna do 10? Yes, I do. Mid journey, thank you. And you can see it's gonna to start to create these. I'm gonna pause while it does this, and then when we come back, we'll see all of the beautiful pictures we made. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna unpause before it's actually done because one of the best things about this is watching them actually generate and see, it's like a surprise. You get to see what Mid journey has helped you create. And so we're starting to have them come up now. This is the paper quill. I usually love, and these are pretty cool. I usually love paper quilling when I'm doing one of these sets of stickers. You can see these are cut, these ones are probably the closest to actually what paper quilling would look like. These are really pretty, those are interesting. But I've got 10 different styles that I can look at and choose from, so we're going to do that. I like, I always love minimalist. Minimalist, when I use that in my prompts, is always one that I love. Like, I, these little flowers are just beautiful, lovely. We might end up using that. But let's look at each, let's look at each style that we created. So this is a past, this is pastel drawing. That's, this is the style that I asked Midjourney for. These are really pretty. They're not really my style. I like these. These are like minimalist pastel, I would say. And I don't know that these are even really pastel, like if they actually look like a pastel drawing, but this is what Midjourney has interpreted it. And so I'm calling it that. These are really pretty. This, this first set up here. And if you haven't used Mid Journey before, you get your first output is four different images. So this is one, right up here in the upper left quadrant, two, three, and four, okay? Here we've got folk art I always love too. These look really pretty. I love this blue one right here. So we've got folk art. These are the pastel drawing. This is the minimalist that we just looked at. These minimalists are so pretty. That's probably what we'll end up using for the stickers, but we'll see. We have seven more to look at. These are line drawing. These are cool. I like these ones up here and those are cool. I like that outline that they have. So those are interesting. Let's see. Here's paper quilling again. These are probably they're, those aren't my favorite. Sometimes paper quilling is my absolute favorite. This time it's not, that's okay. Pop art, Ooh, I love that red poppy right there. That's really pretty. And these are gouache, is it gouache or gouache? Somebody tell me in the comments. These are very pretty. I love this one right here. That one's, that, that's very pretty, I like that. What else do we have? Watercolor. Watercolor, like when you see them in a group like this, they get a little, I don't know, they just look a little bland to me, but but these this set right here, number three, is really pretty. Oh, I like this little spiky flower over here too. What's next? Fauvism? Fauvism? I don't know. These right here are beautiful. These are, these, number one right up here, these are stunning. That flower, stunning. I love it. Okay. See what I mean? How fun it is to like see what, what came up. I love it. And this one is naturalistic. So these are, yeah, these are really pretty too. Okay. But I think I'm going to go, I think I'm actually going to go with, we'll go with this set, the Fauvism set. And I'm going to go with number one. So 
Now we're into the, okay, we're making stickers, so we gotta start thinking about how we're, how that is going to work. I do actually like number one here a lot, but I'm gonna tell you, this is, these are very close together, so it's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the neck to, to edit these once we get them into Canva, so I might, we'll do that one so that you can see how to, how do you can, how you can get around when you don't have a lot of white space behind the images, which makes it a lot easier to edit. So we're gonna do that one. So I'm gonna upscale it, it's this U1 button here. We're gonna upscale that and we can come down to the bottom again. And there it is, let's make it a little bigger. So these are our images. Now, this is one upscale. With Midjourney, you can upscale it again and it's gonna be two times the size of what you first created. And I'm gonna show you with a different example what the difference is, how different they look when you upscale a second time versus when you don't. On this one, I am going to do, I'm gonna do, you can do either upscale creative on this or upscale subtle. Both of them upscale it by two times. So I'm gonna do upscale subtle, which is gonna keep the images pretty much the same. I'll show you both actually. So that's, that's subtle and that's creative. And we're gonna let those run really quick. While that's running, cause it's gonna take a minute, I'm gonna show you the difference between not upscaling it a second time and upscaling it a second time. And we can do that in Canva, let's see. So I made these earlier today get my face out of the way and you can see so this is the original where you don't you, we've upscaled it once this is what it would this is what it looks like you can see it's a little bit blurry it's not really like a crisp pretty image this is with subtle upscale it's almost exactly the same I think it is exactly the same as this it's just a lot clearer and so it's gonna look nicer when you, when you go to manipulate it because we can make it a small sticker we can make it a big gigantic sticker and you can see like it's not losing much clarity as I manipulate it like that. So that's that. And then this is over here, this is the upscale creative. You can see, I think it's actually a little, to me it looks a little clearer even than the, up, the subtle upscale, but there's also some differences. Like there's some subtle, it's called creative. It's, I feel like this should be the subtle one because there are small subtle changes in the image. These are, a little bit different. This center of the flower is different than here or here. This is a lot more clear right here. It's like a, just a different style, I think. So upscaling it that second time is really important because you want to have a nice, crisp, clean. See how those lines, like they're nothing's, they're staying nice and crisp. Whereas with this, it's, get, it's, it's a little fuzzy. We only upscaled this once, so we don't want to do that. Let's go back to Mid Journey and see how that came out. Give that a second, there we go. Okay, so you can see a lot more detail, in my opinion, in this one, as opposed to the one that we first, it doesn't have those sharp lines in this pink flower, like it does here, those dark lines. So you can see this is gonna be a, a better image that we can work with. I'm gonna save this, I just right click on it, save the image, and we're gonna bring this, we're gonna open this up in Canva. So I'm gonna pause and then I'll see you again in Canva in one second. Okay, here we are in Canva. We're gonna create a design. I'm gonna just import this image that we've made. And we'll use it in a design. So we're gonna use it in a design. I'm gonna uh, create that. I'm just gonna have it be a square. This is perfect. I'm gonna make me a little, I'll put myself right there. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna edit the image now, okay? So we're gonna edit image. And we're going to first remove the background and I'm just gonna change the color of the, the background of this just a little bit. Okay, so I don't wanna edit the image. I, want, I just wanna do this background. I wanna change this just so you can see what it looks like with that background removed. We'll just make it a little bit, let's see. Okay, so now you can see there's no background. There's nothing behind these. There's no white behind the images anymore, okay? They're just nothing, no background. So we're gonna edit it again and we're gonna pick one of these for our first digital sticker. So I'm going to crop this and you know I'm going for that pretty red, reddish orange one in the beginning in the, at the top here. So I'm using the crop tool and I'm just moving these little pulley things. I'm not a designer. To isolate that one flower. But you can see I've got like, this is hanging in, in here, this is in here, that's in here, that little leaf, this little thing is in here. So I'm gonna hit done on our cropping. And then we're gonna edit the image again. And we're gonna use the magic eraser tool to magically erase all of the stuff that is around this. I could have done this first too. So we'll get that all out. All right, so all the stuff 
is gone, erased, right? We'll see what that looks like on the actual canvas. Back to the canvas and, oh, I missed a big chunk. So let's do that again. So magic eraser and we're going to get rid of all of this stuff that is down here. Okay, erase it. Give Canva a second to actually do the erasing. And we will see when we go back to that canvas, just that one singular, very pretty flower. And you can see this is because we upscaled it that second time, even though I'm making this way bigger, it's just now starting to get a little bit unclear, but you can get that pretty large. So you can see, you can get this, you can make it a little tiny one, you can make it bigger and you're not losing, let's see how long it, how far it takes me to make to really, you start losing some of the clarity, the bigger you get, but this is a very decent looking sticker in my opinion. So let's duplicate it and let's make another one. So we'll edit the image again and we're going to go back to crop. And so I cropped out some of that. If, if I wanted, if I wanted this one right here, I would just add this image in again. So we'll do that next. So let's say I want this pretty blue flower down here. I can just crop this. We're going to get mostly all of this without, whoops, without any stuff on the side. So I'm cropping around it, just getting it as close as I can without using much, without having to do a, a bunch of additional edits. So we're crop it as close as we can. That's done. I'm going to go edit image again, magic eraser, and we're down here. So we're just going to erase this whole, all of this stuff that is around here. Is that, I think, there we go. And you can make this, if you haven't used this tool in Canva before, you can make the brush size smaller. So if there was like a tiny little something right here that I wanted to get, but I didn't want to like get into the flower at all, you can do that too. Or make the, you can make the brush bigger and just do that too. Okay, so we're gonna erase and we're gonna give that a second to get erased. All right, and now we're gonna go back to our screen and there's a blue flower with our red flower. So these now you can put on, like I could take individual pages and take this one off it there or so that if you wanted to download these individually, you can do that too. Let's see, let me take, I'm gonna add this back in again so I can show you how I've erased, if I were gonna try to use, if I wanted to get that blue flower, see if I use the original image, I've already used the magic eraser and I've erased part of that blue flower that's right there. Let me move it up here. See how I've erased the top of it. So I can't do that with this. So cancel that. But if I just add the image again, the original image, then I can go back and edit, remove the background again, and now I can crop this so that I get, let me make it a little bigger, so that I get just that one flower. We'll keep that little stem that's beside it in here, and we'll crop that like that, edit it again to get rid of, let me make it bigger because that is not going to be easy for me to do when it's that small. So we're gonna magic eraser again, and we're going to get rid of everything that is around this pretty flower. So that one, I'm gonna, that little spot right there, I'm gonna come back with the smaller brush and get that because that's a little too close for me to do with this big brush. All right, so let me make the brush smaller and I'm just gonna make sure I get that little tiny bit right there. Did I get it all? I don't know. Let's see. Erase it. And let's see what happens. No, nope, I missed. I missed a couple little bits. So let's do it again. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. I'm probably going to try to get that and that and just make sure this is all not going to be in my image. All right. Erase again. Let's see how that is. Let's go back. Beautiful. All right. So now we've got a couple of pretty flowers and you can just, you can cut out each one individually or if you just find that there's three on that sheet that you like, you can just duplicate them. And if you were making a, a sticker sheet to use in your good notes planner or whatever you're going to do with these, that's what you can do. We'll just keep duplicating. Whoops. Did I delete by accident? I did. You get the picture. That's how you are creating, like you're getting them into that little individual sticker look. And I just think they're so pretty. Again, we want to think about these as part of a potential bigger digital product, right? If you are somebody that creates planners, 
You could have a, a sticker pack that you could create as a bonus that goes with the planners. If you create something that people are using in their digital scrapbooking, you could do that. These can go into Discord as images for emojis. You can do a million different things with these. One of the other things that you can do that is not involved selling the actual images themselves at all is selling the prompt that you use in Midjourney. I've created books, eBooks that are basically the prompts that you can use to create your own digital stickers for your own digital planner. So check out Etsy. There's tons of options for where people are selling Midjourney prompts so that you can create all sorts of different things. In my case, it's digital stickers, but there's a lot of options when you start to think about Okay, I'd love to create stickers. That seems really fun and would keep my attention and I'd love to be able to make money from it. Okay, how can you expand on that? Like, where's what's the next step? You, you aren't going to be able to sell these stickers for a whole lot of money if you're just selling them as stickers. But if it's part of a planner, if it's part of a scrapbooking something, if it's some type of digital art that you can use in social media or wherever, then, or if you just want to start selling the prompts, there's a lot more options for making money with something like this than just selling the actual sticker itself. Keep that in mind. If you love Midjourney, I do have resources. I'll put them in the description below for how you can learn how to use it better or use it at all. It's They're perfectly beginner friendly or if you've been using it for a little bit and you want a little direction on how you can use it as a, as a creator, someone that's creating to make money online, then they'll help with that too. So have fun making some stickers in Midjourney and let me know if you have any questions about this below.